Hey gang, another exam review problem. This is problem number seven. Let's see what this one's got for us. Find the force P where motion occurs. Do you remember those problems? We did those before. And the, the, the uh, thing that you got to come up with is what does that mean? What does motion occur mean? Okay. Uh, on this problem, I will tell you that the um, back wheel, the wheel at point uh, A is locked. Okay. Which means uh, it has a brake on it. So that's important to know. Okay. So that way when I push on it, it, it doesn't slide away. Right. So we know that that back wheel, this one over here or the back wheels, uh, uh, has a lock on it. So what does this mean? Find P where motion occurs. What does the word motion occurs mean? What does that mean? Occurs. It means number one. Okay. This is the part I like because it's not in the problem statement. You've got to be able to come up with this on your own out of your brain. Number one, if I push on this box, right? The box could slide, right? The cart stays still, the box slides. So I'm going to say box only slides. Okay. What else could happen? Um, I push on the box and since this is point eight, right? Halfway up the box is point seven, five. So this is slightly above the midpoint of the box. If I push on it, the box could tip, couldn't it? Okay. So number two, box tips, tips. Okay. What else could happen? I could push on the box ugh, and the box could be very grippy on the cart and the whole cart could slide, right? So the box plus the cart could slide. Okay. Okay. And then finally, I think there's one more scenario and that is I could push on it and the box and the cart could tip about that back tire there, right? The whole thing could like rotate about there. So we'll put number four, box plus cart um, tips. So what do we do here? Well, we have to find a P value, the force P for every one of these scenarios. And then what are we gonna pick? Are we gonna pick the biggest P or the smallest P. We're going to pick the smallest P because that's the one that's going to happen first. I'll never be able to get to the big ones because that, that smaller one will occur first. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, you know what? It's all about that free body diagram. So let's just go one at a time. Let's test top, top box slides. And so let's look at just the top box. Now, the one thing here is, the crate is uh, 60 kilograms and the cart is 10 kilograms. Okay. Um, let's convert that into Newton since P is in a force. Okay. So times 10 is 98.1 Newtons and times 60 is calculator. 60 times 9.81 is ugh. 588.6. Okay. So we're going to start off and see if the, just the box by itself will slide. So we're going to do a free body diagram of just the box. So there's the box. Okay. So what would you put on that box? Well, this is not too difficult here. It's got the box has a little bit of P on it right there. It's got right here the weight and what does the box weigh? 588.6, yo. 588.6 Newtons. Okay. And what else? Uh, oh, normal force. Box puts a push on cart. Cart push on box. Okay. And then the box wants to slide that way, but friction's like, I don't think so, man. So friction is going to be like that. All right. And there's your friction force, which is really not a force at all. It's a resistance to motion, isn't it? 
Okay, what do we know about the friction force? Here we go. Um, we need we need cart to crate, right? That's that's that part right there. And mu sub s is 0.5. So right here, mu sub s equals 0.5. Okay. So let's see. How about uh, is this fun friction? Yep, it's on the verge of slipping, and so this is 0.5 in. Okay. And so N has to be equal, sum of the force in the Y has to be equal to 588.6, right? And so N is uh, half of, this guy is half of that, and this guy is equal to that guy. So we're fixing to find P, aren't we? It's 588.6, I already have that in my calculator, divided by 2, no, uh, times 0.5, same thing, 294.3, okay? 294 0.3 newtons. Bam. Okay. There's P for scenario number one. All right. Scenario number two, the box tips. All right. So what's going to change for the box tipping? Well, not a whole lot except the normal force and the friction force are now going to move to this corner over here. Okay. Because the instant before the box tips, right, it's going to rotate about this corner. That normal force doesn't have anywhere he can be except right there, okay? And the friction is there to prevent the box from sliding to, to help it tip, isn't it? Okay, so if we take the moment at that corner, tipping you always do a moment, okay? So summing the moments, we'll call it about point C for corner, okay? Equals 588.6, that's positive, 588.6 times how far away from the corner? Okay, from here to where the load is, is half of 0.6, it's 0.3 meters, okay? And then P rotates me, oh, that's negative, so minus P times, um, how about 0.8? Okay, let's see what we get. 588.6 times 0.3 equals and then divided by 0.8 equals 220.73. Okay, so now that one is winning, right? That one will never happen, but the box is going to tip over, right? And, and what, what, how, what does that? Well, mu sub s is 0.5. That's pretty dadgum grippy there, right? Look at the floor down here. Though the floor is 0.35, which means the floor is kind of slippy, right? That's muy grippy. That's muy slippy. Okay, so let's see if we can do the next scenario, the box plus the cart slide. All right, so let's draw that free body. Okay, here we go. So this time I'm going to draw the whole entire thing. Okay. And I'm just going to consider, this is not going to move, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to consider this as one big thing, okay? And then here's this other deal down here, okay? So I have BY, AY, and then the friction force over here, which is 0.35 times AY, okay? And how much does the whole thing weigh? The whole thing weighs 588.6 plus 98.1. The whole thing is 686.7. Okay? So, will it slide? Here's the force P. Okay? Um, I've got to find out what AY is. I need to find out what, I've got to write all three equations here because I have three unknowns. I have BY, AY, and I also have P, right? So let's write the equations. The sum of the forces in the X is equal to this guy, uh, this guy P minus 0.35 AY. The sum of the forces in the Y is equal to AY plus BY um, minus 
686.7. Okay. Good. And then what? In the, uh, the sum of the moments. So where do you want to take the moment about? Well, you look here. I've got an equation that has P and AY in it. Is there any way I can get another equation with just P and AY in it? Let's take the moment here. And then BY is knocked out, and I'll have P and AY in it. That's good, okay? Okay. And so what do we get? If we take the moment there, we have P that rotates us negative, so minus P times how far away from BY. So that's the ground down here. I'm taking the moment about there. So 0.25 plus 0.8, 1.05, right? 1.05, okay? The 686.7 rotates me, ooh, that's negative, minus 686.7 times how far away? Okay, so, oh, that's a little bit trickier. Not too tricky, though. I'm gonna go 1.5, then come back 0.25, that's 1.25, and then from there, subtract another 0.3 which puts me at 0.95. Did you understand that? So from here, I gotta go all the way to the other side, come back to that, and come back half of the crate, and then I'll be at that centroid, okay? Or where the, where the, uh, the weight is applied. Okay, and then finally, I've got AY, which rotates me, AY rotates me uh, positive. This one's gonna get knocked out, isn't he? Bam, he's a cha-cha force goes right through that point, so that one gets knocked out. So AY, so plus AY times, and then the distance between there, 1.5. Okay? So from this equation here, we find that P is equal to 0.35 AY. Oh, we got it, don't we? Put that in this equation here, and um, we solve for uh, we solve for P, don't we? Okay. So what do I have there? I have P minus P times 1.05 minus 686. Well, let me do that one in my calculator. 686.7 um, times, what do I got there? 0.95. That's 652.4. Okay. 652.4, and then I've got plus a y times 1.5, so plus, uh, I'm going to substitute this in, 0.35, um, no, no, I don't want it solved for p, I want it solved for a y, don't I? So a y is equal to 1 divided by 0.35, uh, 2.86, 2.86p. Okay, that's better. So I'm going to put that in for a y, okay? So 2.86p times 1.5. And all of that has to equal to 0, okay? And so I get uh, what in the world? So 652.4 is equal to um, 2.86 times 1.5 equals 4.29. And then from 4.29, I need to subtract 1.05 minus 1.05. Leaves me a 3.24. P, which makes P equal to, now we're getting somewhere, aren't we? 652.4 divided by 3.24, 201.36. So, the next scenario here, okay? The next scenario down, P equals 201.4 newtons. We've got a new winner so far. Scenario number three is gonna happen. 
And why is scenario three going to happen? Because the floor has a very low coefficient of friction, doesn't it? Okay. Last scenario. All right, I'm going to erase my work here. I'm going to leave my free body. We'll talk about that. I'm going to erase all this to give me some room. We got to have some room. Okay. Oh, that was so good, wasn't it? Okay, so here we go. We're talking about the last one, the box plus the cart tips. Where is it going to tip about? It's going to a tip about this point right there, isn't it? If I push, this, the brake would have to be holding like really good, and the whole thing would go over. Now, the instant before it starts to tip, the instant before it tips, if I had a scale under this tire, what would it read? Zero, right? The instant before it tips over, the BY is going to go to zero, okay? So again, for tipping, I'm going to take the moment at this wheel over here and see what P is, okay? So some of the moments about point A, which is over there. Here we go. Drum roll, please. I got P, which rotates me. Ooh, that's negative. Minus P times how far away is that from A up to P? 1.05. 1.05. And then from A over to here is how far? 0.25 plus 0.3. That's 0.55. And that guy rotates me positive. So plus 686.7 times 0.55. Okay, here we go. Here we go. 686.7 times 0.55 equals, and then divided by, 1.07 equals 353. Takes 353 newtons to do that. That is never going to happen, is it? Because the whole cart will slide away before that can ever happen, right? So guess what's going to happen? The bit, the P where motion occurs is 201.4, right? That one right there, okay? Love, love, love this problem because none of this is in the problem statement. If you don't know what you're doing, if you can't answer the question, what is motion? You'll never be able to solve this problem and get the right answer. So come up with the scenarios and then test each one of the scenarios and the smallest one's going to happen first. Okay? Boom. I hope that is good stuff. This has been slipping, tipping problem. Okay? Let's make a hundred, y'all. Come on.